guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be trying recipes from the 1930s. So I had the idea for this video actually several months ago as soon as I found this book in Northampton when me and my now husband were still living there because I just feel like the fact that this book even still exists is kind of amazing. I'm really interested in food overall and I love trying new things and I just looked through some of the pages here and I immediately noticed that there are a lot of recipes here that you just would never find anywhere nowadays. So I do want to try a couple of recipes. So this is called the Complete Illustrated Cookery Book. And it says right there in tiny letters that this is from 1934. Something else that really stood out to me about this book is that this book is obviously super, super thick, but also the letters on it are really really tiny and there are barely any pictures so this has over 2,000 recipes and hints on housework, labor-saving devices, kitchen equipment, gas, electric and other methods of cooking, marketing, vegetable cookery, invalid cookery and honestly I still don't know what that is I should probably look that up, pickles and preserves, beverages, carving and table service so this is not just a cookbook it's mostly a cookbook but it also has like actual chapters talking about, you know, the kitchen and what appliances it should have and how you should try to keep it and stuff like that. So it's definitely not just a cookbook, which I'm not sure if a lot of people would find interesting, but I've read almost everything that's written here apart from the recipes because like I said, there's over 2000 of them and the book is pretty big. So one of the recipes that I want to try and I purposely bought the ingredients to be able to make this is spinach with bananas. And I have no idea how that's going to turn out because obviously it's not a combination I've ever had before. So after what was probably a bit too long of an introduction, I'm going to start with the spinach and bananas. It says prepare a puree of spinach in the ordinary way and drain well. And I've already done that, but because spinach is one of those vegetables that kind of disappears into nothing. A pretty big bunch turned into like that. I mean, it still works to make it. I'm just gonna make a pretty small portion, which is fine. I mean, I'm kind of just making these for myself anyway, so it's all right. Stir it into a rich bechamel sauce over the fire till the whole thing is thoroughly amalgamated and the result is a thick creamy texture. So I've got my frying pan and I'm just going to put the spinach in here. Something also that I've generally just noticed about this book is that not all of the recipes have very specific instructions and this is one of them that it just says sort of put these things together and cook them in this way. I don't know exactly how much spinach I should have used for this. I don't know exactly how many bananas or anything because it doesn't have like the ingredients list and then the recipe, it's kind of just the recipe. It does smell pretty good because it just it doesn't smell like spinach at all, it just smells like bechamel. So that's actually most of the recipe done. This recipe in particular is pretty simple. It does say afterwards to season with pepper, salt, and a dash of paprika. I've already salted it actually when I was making the spinach, so I'm not gonna do that. I can't use pepper because we don't have pepper in the house, we just don't use it because me and my husband both really dislike pepper, but I am going to add the dash of paprika and uh, that's the spinach part done, basically. Okay, so here's the result. Just gonna sprinkle in some paprika. Now I'm just mixing it. Okay, now it smells a bit more like spinach. As it's cooling down, it's smelling less like bechamel sauce and more like spinach, I think. Now the banana part. On another part of the fire, fry some bananas cut in two lengthwise in good fresh butter. Again, some bananas. I don't know how many those are. For the amount of spinach that I have, I'd honestly probably just make like one banana. So I just cut the banana and now I guess I'm gonna go fry it in butter and hope for the best. Thank you. 
dish on the puree of spinach and at the last moment a tiny squeeze of lemon juice and a dash of paprika i don't know it's <laughs> This recipe is like really weird to me, not just because of the components or because it doesn't go into specifics about the amounts or how long you're supposed to cook things for, but also because it's just kind of like, oh, make the spinach, mix it with bechamel and then make the bananas. I assume you're just supposed to eat them together, like on a plate, maybe. I think I'm just going to put the bananas on top of the spinach in this bowl because why not? I'm just gonna taste it and see if it's decent, I guess. So this is what it ended up looking like and i am pretty scared of what this is going to taste like because i would never have put these two together if i wasn't you know following the specific recipe it's just really bizarre cheers i guess <laughs> it's really weird i can't say that it's good but also i kind of don't totally hate it. I feel like I've had worse. Because it's got the sweet and salty thing going on, it's not horrible. It mostly tastes like banana with like a layer of creamy something. The spinach part in comparison to the banana doesn't really have a very strong flavor. It has like the texture of spinach, of course. It's not horrible. That's like, that's the best I can do to describe this to you guys. Like it's so strange but it's not inedible it's it doesn't make me want to gag it doesn't really gross me out i could finish the bowl i don't think i would ever make it again because it's so bizarre out of 10 i would have to give this maybe like a 5.5 because to me it's sort of slightly leaning towards good ish because of the sweet and salty thing and because the spinach doesn't have nearly as much flavor as a banana in this case. If you want to try it, please be my guest and let me know what you guys think of it. And this recipe was actually really simple. The other one that I really want to try to make today is haricot bean croquettes, which is like white bean croquettes. For this recipe, I need half a pound of cooked white bean flour, one and a half ounces of butter, margarine or dripping, breadcrumbs, two eggs, frying fat, salt, pepper, and fried parsley. So at least this recipe actually has the amount of the ingredients before the actual recipe. So the first step is to press the beans through a sieve. Yeah, this isn't really gonna work that well. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's just like water from the beans. There isn't really any beans in there. So I'm just gonna keep trying, but if that doesn't change, I'm just gonna have to use these like mushed up beans. I'm done. I think I'm just done. My arm hurts like hell. Unfortunately, as I thought, there's just like liquid in here and the only thing that went through is just what's stuck here, which is almost nothing. So yeah, I'm just gonna use the white beans that now look nothing like white beans. Melt the margarine or dripping and mix in the sieved beans and enough beaten egg to bind. Melted margarine. Well, that really didn't take very long. It's quite lumpy, but I think it's mostly just from the skins of the beans. Season well and turn it onto a plate to cool. I wonder why this needs to cool down since it's not even remotely warm. Like I did melt the margarine, but because the beans were cold and the eggs obviously were also cold, it's not even a little warm. So I think I'm just going to skip that because honestly it's cold. Season well and turn it onto a plate to cool. When set, shape into balls. 
or cork shapes with the aid of a little flour. So I'm just going to add a little bit and mix and see how much flour you actually need for something like this because I have no idea. I've never made croquettes before. Okay, it's now more like kind of a very lumpy pancake dough. So that's progress. A bit more. I think now this should be enough. Cause now it's like pretty, pretty thick. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go with ball shapes. They seem a little bit easier, so. After what feels like forever, I've got some very like misshapen um, kind of croquette balls, I guess. Brush these over with beaten egg, dip in breadcrumbs, and fry in a little hot fat until pale brown. I think this is a pretty decent setup. Here are the croquettes, the egg, the breadcrumbs, and just an empty tray to put them in afterwards. I'm finally done like breading all the croquettes and as expected this is way more than a portion because again I'm the only one who's gonna be eating this so I sure hope they're good because if they're not it's just a waste and if they are I guess that's what I'm gonna be eating for the next four five days I don't know drain on paper arrange the croquettes neatly on a paper on a hot dish and garnish with fried parsley. Okay, so after about two and a half hours, I think in total cooking, I've got this gigantic plate of white bean croquettes. Like they actually do smell really good. Some of them are like really weirdly shaped and kind of big. This looks more like fried chicken than a croquette. I also have a few that, well, while I was putting them in the fryer that fell apart. So I've got a few that are pretty small. I'm just going to try, I think, one of the smaller ones. I do really like that they fried really well. The outside is really crunchy and the inside, and it looks really soft and fluffy, I guess, because of the egg. They're not bad in any way, but I did think they would have a bit more flavor, but honestly, like, all I can taste is just the fried breadcrumbs because the inside doesn't really taste like anything. And I kind of wish I'd tasted the mixture before adding the eggs. It tastes like fried dough that, again, doesn't have much of a flavor on the inside. Like, if someone gave these to me, I would never in a million years guess that it's made with white beans. I'd just assume it's flour and eggs and breadcrumbs and that's it, really. I've got my parsley and salt and I'm just going to sprinkle a bit kind of all over and just hope that that makes it taste more like something because it tastes like nothing. How can it taste like nothing? <laughs> like I spent two hours making these for them to taste like nothing. That's pretty damn annoying. <sighs> yeah. With 
more salt. At least they do taste savory and they're like crunchy on the outside and soft in the middle. I still wouldn't guess that these are made with white beans. They do taste kind of nice. They just taste very doughy. I gave the spinach with banana a 5.5 out of 10 and I would give these a 6. I probably wouldn't make either of these recipes again. I could make white bean croquettes again, but definitely add more to the dough so that it tastes more like something because it really doesn't have that much of a flavor. Anyway, if you try either of these recipes or something similar, let me know what you guys thought. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.